Welcome back, everyone, to another edition of Rudy's Rants. This is Rudy Rodriguez Shomont from Come On Now, the podcast. I am your host, and we are back again to talk some stuff. This will be a little bit different, though, because this is not really so much of a rant as a message of appreciation, because the, you know, because recently, uh, I think it was yesterday, actually, um, Skip Bayless announced that he would be leaving, or it was announced that Skip Bayless would be leaving FS1 at the end of the summer. Skip Bayless, to many people, is a number of different things. People have opinions about Skip Bayless. Some of them are negative. Others are positive. Some are in between. But the one thing about Skip Bayless that you can't take away from him is that he created an, he really created an industry that has allowed so many others to become well-known, make great livings, and be content creators. Give hot takes, no matter how stupid they may sound, insulting they may be. He created a platform for people, sports fans, media members. Because before Skip Bayless, journalists, print journalists, weren't typically on television. They were writing stories for newspapers. Skip Bayless provided an avenue for Stephen A. Smith to become arguably the most famous talk show host on ESPN or even sports across the board in in the country. Hell, the world, you could say. While his relationship with Shannon Sharp deteriorated, Skip Bayless provided Shannon Sharp that platform for six years to grow into what he's become. And later on, because of that platform, he developed a following. He didn't have that following before Skip Bayless. No one really cared about Shannon Sharp before Skip Bayless, but they cared about him after he was with Skip Bayless. And then, yes, he ended up becoming more important than Skip Bayless to many people. But without Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp is the retired football player. Now Shannon Sharp is Unk, Club Shay Shay, Nightcap. He has all these properties. He's doing amazing work. You know, heck, you can look at a show like Pat McAfee. And I'm not saying that they're the same, but they're cut from the same cloth because Pat McAfee is really good at saying outlandish shit, truth teller, hot take guy, all those things. So while Skip Bayless is going to be leaving FS1, I think people really need to sit back and take a look and really understand the impact he had. Yeah, did he say stuff that I that you could say was just insulting? Sure, absolutely. There like when he would refer to Chris Bosch as Chris Chris Bosch Spice, that's the, that's offensive. It's totally offensive. And I didn't like it as a viewer. And Chris Bosch didn't like it as a person, as a man. So much that he went on to the show, and he had to really let Skip Bayless know like you're insulting my name. It's not just my name, it's the name of my father, mother, whoever, grandparents, etc. Like, you're disrespecting our family. You know, when he refers to, you know, when he would refer to LeBron James as Queen James, I said, I mean, I'm not a LeBron fan, but I don't think referring to him on a public forum, on a platform like ESPN, calling him Queen, um, is is all that professional. It's, It's disrespectful, in my opinion. So, yeah, he would go over over the top on things. You know, his Tim Tebow adoration. Heck, I was a big Tim Tebow fan. I'm not even a Florida Gator fan. But I thought Tim Tebow got a raw deal at times, personally. But, you know, I thought Tim Tebow was better than people really wanted to give him credit for. And, you know, but he couldn't really throw the ball as well as he needed to. And it is what it is. But Skip Bayless gave people opportunity. And I think that's forgotten. Because all you look at is the bombastic, ridiculous crap, the throwing the Cowboys jerseys into the trash can. I think he's throwing the same Cowboys jersey into the trash can 
10 times by now. And I think, I mean, his shtick became a little bit stale because, you know, you're, you're this old white dude who's wearing gold chains, trying to dress like you're 35 years old when you're 70 plus. I mean, he's 73 years old from what I've read. So this is probably, I mean, realistically, I mean, if I'm 73 years old and I've made as much money as he's probably made, I'm retiring. I'm not, why, why do I need to keep on doing this? But Skip Bayless it should be thanked by so many. I'm a, I have a degree in journalism. I have a degree in print journalism. And I, I can tell you, I have a degree, a degree in print journalism. And I can tell you that I always had a dream of being on television. That was something that I always wanted to do. I was on some television. Sh I was on a couple of recruiting television shows um, like 10 plus years ago. It was fu a fun experience. Um, that was 2008. I, I did a TV show on recruiting in South Florida, which was pretty dope. But the fact that I'm here now, 16 years later, doing a podcast with a couple of buddies of mine, just talking sports. And it's been a lot of work. And we've been at it now for six months. But I can tell you that I always wanted to do stuff like this, but it's scary. It, it, it's scary to put yourself out there. It's scary to 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 make that leap because I didn't know how to edit video at all. I'm editing these videos. I do all the editing for these videos. I had to teach myself how to use uh, you know Canva and and CapCut and Riverside platform, and I'm learning more and more every day. And I'm 46 years old, so I'm starting at this kind of late. But I enjoy it, and I'm having a good time, and, and, and we're making headway, and we're over 2,100 subscribers, closing in on 2,200 subscribers. And in part, we're able to do this because of someone, because of Skip Bayless. I mean, not directly attributed to him, but because I don't know him. But we're able to put out a show on the internet, a podcast, and give our opinions on sports, and people watch it because people enjoy listening to others' opinions on sports. I watch 20 different podcasts. I watch other podcasts just for ideas on things. Saying, oh, they, they, oh, that's interesting. Oh, you know what? I have a different spin on it. And then I'll talk about it. And people will listen. People will like, dislike, watch it or not watch it. But this is all here for all of us because of Skip. I mean, honestly, because of a guy like Skip Bayless, because he was truly the first show of hot takes. If you remember before first take and cold pizza and, and, and I think that, you know, those are the show that was the show. Cold pizza was before first take before that show. You watch sports that are like five times a day from like 1030 in the morning until 230 in the afternoon. Like they didn't have programming they didn't have get up they didn't have or they had the mike and mike show they didn't have all these shows they didn't have it back you know 20 years ago get up and first take and now the pat mcafee at one point you know, you know max kellerman you 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 know you've had the show that had marcellus wiley with with max kellerman you you know you don't have any of these things. i mean literally every show now is the same show realistically it's all the same get up is the same as first take it really is speak on fs1 is literally the same it's more of a the different type but it's all opinion 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 so all of that can be attributed to skip bayless and people will say, oh, you're crazy. No, no it, it, it truly is. You don't even remember the beginning of it because it's so, been so long ago. But it's not been that long ago. Because I remember what broadcasting used to be like on television, what, what, what would happen to cable at a certain hour of the night. It, your screen would turn black or gray because there was no programming, programming left to put on. Because programming costs money. But the internet has changed all of that. It doesn't cost me a dollar to make this video right now. But I'll make a few dollars off of it. I mean, yeah, I have the program that I got to pay for my monthly for CapCut and whatever else. But for the most part, 
you, you know, it, it's one of those things where Skip Bayless is responsible for so many people having the opportunity to do what they're doing today. So many. I mean, heck, even in the past year, he put on Keyshawn Johnson. He put Michael Irvin back on. When Michael Irvin was unemployed, he put Richard Sherman on. He put – um. He got Rachel Nichols on there. I mean, remember what happened with her with ESPN? Like, so he's giving people oper- Paul Pierce, who persona non grata from his silliness on the internet and causing himself to lose his job. You know, so all these different individuals getting opportunities because of Skip Bayless. So I will say this in closing: I've enjoyed watching Skip Bayless. Do I think his, did I did I enjoy the last couple of years? Not so much. But for the most part, I would enjoy his back and forth with Stephen A. Smith. To me, that was a lot of fun. I would love to see that again. I actually wouldn't be be too upset if you saw Skip Bayless go back to ESPN and jump on first take with Skip, with Stephen A. Smith. I think that would be a complete full circle type of situation. Um, I don't think it will happen, but I think it would be pretty cool, even, as a, even if just for one day as a guest. But for me... To you, Skip Bayless, I know this means nothing. I say thank you for what you did for sports. Thank you for providing these platforms and these avenues for people to jump on here and talk their shit and speak and say whatever the hell they think, no matter who it bothers or who, if, if, if they care or they don't care. But thank you because you created an avenue for all of us. That's all I got. Come on now.